Have you thought about getting a reverse osmosis system for your maple syrup operation? But you don't know if you want to buy one or build one? You didn't even know you could build one? Well, check out this video. I'm going to save you a ton of money and time in both cooking and trying to even order one because a lot of them are on back order. It's just the world we live in. But check this out. I'll show you how to build one. So building this started because I saw it sitting in a shop, in a, in a local sugar supply shop and uh it was like four thousand bucks right it's a little bit small for what we want but uh we don't really want to buy the big one yet because that one's like 15 grand so i figured you know why not try building it so that's exactly what i did now some quick specs on this before i go over how i built it i have ran it a total of five days. I've pulled close to 3,000 gallons of water out of the sap, and that was out of approximately 6,500 gallons, 6,000 to 6,500 gallons of sap. So I've took half the water out, saved over 30 hours of cooking and 30 hours of burning wood. And when you burn five wheelbarrow fulls every hour, that adds up pretty quick. So it's just a twin membrane, four inch by 40. And I'll have most of these parts listed in the description, the membranes and whatnot. You'll have to find some stuff locally. Like I bought all my plumbing locally and I bought the two wheel dolly locally because you don't need to buy everything on Amazon, but two four inch by 40 membranes. And this is infinitely expandable. You can add as many as you want, as long as you have the pumps to do it. It runs in series. It comes down through this one, out the bottom, and up the top. Concentrate comes out here. Permeate comes out the bottom. And it's just run together in series. So this is uh, my permeate line. It drains out of the bottom of both. And then this is my concentrate line. And that just shoots up to the top. So it's, it's super simple. It looks way worse than what it is. But it's super, super simple. Finally starting to figure in this RO one out, going for a 2% sugar here in this tank. Single pass to almost a 6.7% sugar. All through the homemade 110 volt twin membrane RO pump. Here's how I did it. First thing I did was I marked my three hole locations centered on those ribs there. After I got the holes marked, I started off with drilling small pilot holes in the three locations on each bar. And then I followed that up with drilling the proper quarter inch hole. After all the holes were drilled, I went and installed the rubber centering piece in the center hole on each one of those brackets. Next, I loosely installed the banding straps that hold the membrane housings in place. Then I installed the housings and I snugged them down and left them a little loose so I can adjust them to the proper height. After they were adjusted to the proper height, I snugged it down. Next, I installed little L brackets to hold the upper pump, making a nice little wooden shelf. And after the wooden shelf was installed, I drilled a couple holes to hold, to put zip ties through to hold the motor. So initially I installed this little pump here on the bottom as shown in the, in the video here, but uh, we're just gonna ignore this part. And instead of installing that pump, you're going to install two identical pumps, just like what will be shown next. So kind of skip this part. So I initially built this to make it so anybody can build it. But once the season's over, I'm going to uh, tear this apart and weld on some shelves instead of holding everything on with zip ties, as shown here. 
Now it's time to start installing all your plumbing fittings. Using uh, some Teflon tape on the threads, just go ahead and install all of your fittings in the corresponding spots. After all your fittings are installed, it's time to put on the hoses. And just connect the dots. The use of a heat gun will help to soften the plastic and make it go on quite a bit easier and help create a better seal. So, a little pro tip for you. After we got the lower plumbing and the front side done, now it's time to start doing the rear lower plumbing. Starting with installing the black plastic caps and rings on the membranes. After everything's tight, you're going to want to make sure you install the tubing on the right side canister before you put the lid on the bottom of your left side canister. Otherwise, that tube is going to be almost impossible to get on your elbow. The outer one your permeate line, it doesn't matter. You can do that after the fact. When you're installing your membranes and even the O-rings on your caps, make sure that you put some food grade grease. Just a little goes a long way. Food grade grease on those and it'll help and aid with installation and sealing. This is a very important step. Now I did loosen the left side membrane just a little bit to help aid in getting that tube on and also help me get the membrane in. Each one of your membranes has a flow indicator on it. and You want to make sure that you have your membranes installed in the proper orientation. There is an O-ring on one side and not an O-ring on the other. So make sure you follow that flow orientation as indicated on your membrane perfectly. Otherwise the system will not work properly. After the tube is on, go ahead and snug down your fan clamps. Now that the concentrate line has been hooked up, it's time to hook up the permeate line. Start with the right side, then install on the left side. Now because I'm making this mobile so I can take it in and out, because our sugar shack isn't heated, and I want to keep this in a heated garage, I am going from 3 quarter inch permeate line to half inch. After putting some grease on the O-ring and double checking the flow direction, it is time to install the next membrane. Just slides in nice and easy. And thanks to putting the grease on that upper O-ring there, it will sit into place just like that. Then it's time to put on your left cap and then your right cap. Make sure you put some food grade grease on them O-rings. Then it's time to install the upper clamps that holds the lids in place. And now we're going to install the stainless steel pipes that come out of your concentrate side. This is going to be your high pressure side. These items right here is what is going to make your RO work. The higher you squeeze it, the higher your pressure inside these canisters, the more water you will remove on each pass. So make sure, put plenty of Teflon tape on here, and don't skip out on this part. And use metal. Don't use plastic. I went with stainless because I'm trying to be food grade here. So I highly suggest that you also use stainless. Now to create my pressure, I went with a ball valve. You can also use one of them screw down valves. But I like a ball valve because if something happens in an emergency, you can open this and close this quickly if you need to. After installing the 300 PSI pressure gauge, here's what I've learned after a few days of running it. Let's go outside. All right, so we got the homemade RO running. And you can tell it's not horribly loud. It does make some noise, but it's not too bad. Last couple days of running it, I didn't know it, but I had that filter in a little crooked, so it wasn't getting the best flow. Today I put a brand new filter in, this thing's working awesome for a 110 two membrane RO. Um, now the way this works is at first you hook up where you turn on the lower pump, then you turn on the upper pump, and then you move this lever right here and that adjusts your PSI. You can see when I open it, it lowers 
and when I close it, it raises. And it's been running pretty good right around that 120 to 125 PSI mark. Now, how this is plugged together is that is sap that's coming out of the bulk tank. And it runs through this one inch line into the lower pump. Goes through the first pump into this filter. And then it comes out of this filter into the second pump. Comes out of the second pump, goes into the top of this membrane. It shoots down through this membrane, and they run in series. Out the bottom, it comes back up the top of this membrane. And then your concentrate flows out right here. And the bottom right here is where your permeate flows, which is your pure, clean drinking water. And as you can tell, I got a I got a couple little leaks, but it happens. I'm not a I'm not a plumber, but it does uh, hooks up via these cam locks and shoots up to this upper bulk tank, which is going to be the gravity system that feeds the evaporator. Right now she's pretty empty. Uh, I'm not so sure you can see but it's it's flowing in there that's concentrated sap and it's coming out approximately a six percent sugar now that I got this fixed and it's got good flow we're removing almost three points we're moving a little over three points of sugar each pass so this stuff is sitting about two to two and a half and it's coming out between a five seven and a six now keep in mind this is a homemade 110 volt RO system. If you have 220 power, I don't, but if you have 220 power, I would definitely recommend getting 220 volt pumps because you really want this to be up in that 150 to 200 mark, somewhere in there. Now this is working, but the higher you can squeeze it, the more sugar or the more water you will remove and the higher your sugar content will be so if you can remove more or if you can do 220 volts definitely do it now i know i said i was limited on power and i am i'm running this off of the generator that's why i had to go 110 but here's where my permeate comes out i got it in one of these bulk tanks it's just uh clean clear water now you can drink that, that's, that's some good stuff. Gets a little over the beard, but that's all right. That's good stuff. This tank holds 400 gallons. I ran this a little bit last night and I'm running it now. There's probably I don't know, 275, 275 gallons or so in there. And we keep this to uh, run back through the RO once we're done using it. That's how you're supposed to clean it. That in some RO soap. And every once in a while do a citric acid wash. But that is pure drinking water. Good stuff. But if you have any other questions on, on the reverse osmosis homemade uh, maple system, just let me know down in the comments. I'll leave all the parts in the description. So if you have any interest in building such a system, you can do it. That's my homemade RO for running maple sap. As always, thanks for watching JDS Outdoors.